problems that they really don't understand in an attempt to make people more dependent upon them. And this would all be pretty funny, with the exception of the threat that this poses, or that it still poses on our economy. Uh, as Washington continues to flail, we're going to stay focused. We're going to stay focused on sustaining economy, an economy that leads this nation. Uh, we're going to continue to defend the entrepreneurial climate of the state, uh, a climate that rewards risk takers and innovation. And, and look, I'm not saying that Texas has been immune to this national economic crisis. Uh, there, you know, there are far too many Texans, John, who uh, have lost job. This, this, this recession has impacted. Uh, but with that said, I was really encouraged with uh, uh, a report that M. Ray Perryman, a very well-known uh, Texas economist, put out. He recently said that Texas will be, was the last state in to this recession, will be the first state out. Uh, and he pointed to the job growth uh, that our state has experienced in, in three of the past six months as an indicator of that. Uh, the fact that our unemployment rate uh, is, uh, uh, has remained, I should say, two uh, points below the national average. But, but the fact is, we can't rest until every Texan who wants a job has a job. Uh, and, and working in their favor uh, is the climate that we build here in the state with our emphasis on low taxes and uh, fair laws, predictable regulations. Entrepreneurs know that they can succeed on their own merits here, uh, without being taxed, regulated, and, and uh, litigated uh, out of existence. They also know that our workforce is getting stronger every day uh, because we improve the quality of public education. You all passed laws that have made our schools more accountable. The largest teacher incentive pay program in America, requiring that our children have a mastery of the basic subjects. So, uh, you know, companies like Caterpillar, Metronics, and, and Toyota, they know when they come here and they invest hundreds of millions, if not billions of dollars in this region, that that workforce is going to be. And we're going to make education even stronger. Uh, for instance, I announced that I'm going to ask the legislature to double the size of our STEM academies, where students are going to be immersed uh, in learning those science and technology and engineering and math programs that are so essential to a high-tech economy. Uh, and to cut down on our state's dropout rate and expand opportunity for students across the state, I've called for the creation of a Texas virtual high school. So we'll be, we're talking about expanding and leveraging the Texas virtual network that you all passed last session so we can keep more Texas uh, kids engaged in their education and obviously make the workforce even stronger in the future. So as we work to raise the quality of a Texas education even higher, we're also working to lock in some wise limits on spending uh, to keep Texas strong in the days to come. Uh, for instance, I hope the legislature will allow Texans to amend our Constitution with two key provisions. One is requiring two-thirds of the legislature to approve any tax increases. And the other is limiting spending growth to the combined growth rates of our population and inflation. This will continue the discipline that led it out to budgets in 2009, along with, as John mentioned to you, uh, billions of dollars that are sitting there in our rainy day fund in surplus. Uh, and I might add that major tax relief that we uh, gave to 40,000 additional small businesses since last year. That's the kind of sensible approaches that will help us weather this dual threat uh, of a floundering global economy and a federal government that would rather spend another tax dollar than tell somebody no. Uh, so to kind of help Washington learn that vital skill, 
I've also called on the United States Congress to pass legislation that would allow Americans to vote on a balanced budget amendment to the United States Constitution. That requirement has what has forced the Texas legislature, Texas leaders, to make some tough choices. It's what's kept our state strong, is to have that balanced budget amendment in our Constitution. This kind of change is needs to and uh, especially when the powers that be in Washington, D.C. Uh, would just as soon keep spending money. But working together will keep Texas going strong and leading this country out of the hole it finds itself in today. And speaking to somebody who knows how to uh, keep that principled, conservative, physical leadership intact in Austin, Texas, is a dear friend. And a guy that frankly we're going to miss in, uh, in Austin at uh, the upcoming legislative sessions. But he is someone who is well known in the halls of, of, uh, of the Capitol in Austin, and that's uh, your state representative, Frank Ford. Frank?